All right, let's uh, let's take a look at the latest Dragon OS Focal I'm working on here. It's running live on a laptop here with a USB stick, and I'm just recording directly on it. Um, I got my first ever Air Spy that showed up, and I've got a Ham It Up kit and a U-Loop antenna, so I figure what better thing to show all this working together uh, than to show the latest SDR++. It's rig control working with WSJTX. I've shown this in the past to receive FT8 messages and um, I know for a fact to plug in the AirSpy directly into this laptop and using SDR++ and all the gain uh, settings that are available uh, with this U-Loop antenna. I've, it's, I've received all kind of messages and I've done nothing special but just have it kind of here by the window. But I changed it up a little bit for this video, and so there's going to be a um, Raspberry Pi elsewhere on the network that it actually has the AirSpy plugged into it, the Ham It Up kit, and the uh, U-Loop attached. So we'll use the Spy server. So even if you don't have that particular setup, you can do all the same thing with the um, um, AirSpy plugged directly into the laptop. So the default username and password for the Raspberry Pi is Ubuntu and Dragon, so make sure you change that. I'll go to the user source directory, spy server, and uh, I, I already know the air spy is plugged in, but you could run soapy util dash dash find, hit enter, and make sure your device is recognized. But we'll just do dot forward slash spy server, which will start up the server and wait for our connection. We also want to, um, I've shown it in the past. Let's see, uh, we want to do a virtual audio sync, which I've already done. So putting this in, you could probably use Pulse Audio in the monitor mode interface, but what we want to do is get the audio coming from SDR++ over to WSJTX. So I just use this command here, it's pretty simple. Alright, we'll get SDR++ opened up here. And normally you would just have AirSpy selected because you'll probably have it plugged in locally. In my case, I'll just do the Spy server. Hit connect. All right, we see it connected. I'm going to drop it down to 1.2 megahertz. It should be, it should work on the Spy server. Take the gain up. Got this real nice feature here where I can directly set the ham it up so all the frequency offset is taken care of. We'll do the decimation, we'll take that down some. We'll do upper sideband and I know I'm going through this a little fast but I've shown it in the past so uh, radio we'll take that to virtual sync so we can see virtual sync uh, is there uh, shown after running that command and we'll start the rig control server. Let's go ahead and start the radio Okay, we can see we are connected. Now if I go ham radio, open up WSJTX. If it's the first time you open it, you go to file, settings. Oh, you also want to make sure your time is uh, uh, really accurate So for these FT8 messages. So sound card, I'll come down here. Because I accidentally ran that command twice and made two virtual syncs, I know that for this to work right now, I need to select virtual sync 2 because although it doesn't say it in SDR++, that's the sync that it's on. We'll do default for output, and then over in radio, we'll change this to rig control. We'll test that. We see we do have a connection, and you can verify that here over in SDR++ at the bottom. It says connected. All right. Uh, you also want to get your wide graph up here so you can see where the activity is once we get this going and the, the screen's a little smaller so we'll just do the best we can here uh, let's see I'll take the audio down some get that in the green here and we want mode FT8 we'll just see if there's some activity on uh, 7 megahertz 40 meter band and so let's see what else decode and mode FT8 alright we'll look for some activity up here if I left click move my little green uh, bracket over 
we can see we are getting some activity here. I'm by no means an expert at um, ham yet. Matter of fact, it probably needs to be on uh, lower side band. Let me let me take it back to 20. Let's see if we got some activity there. stick with 40 right now because I know there was a lot of all right so once we got some activity going something that I don't have in Dragon OS here is uh, yet is a grid tracker and we see it listens to traffic from WSJTX and displays it on a map I mean there's more uh, information than that. You can see the traffic decodes, logbooks, weather, uh, and more information there. But we'll just show uh, if we go download this, download the Linux version, the x64, which I've already done, and we'd extract it, which would give us that folder there. Open up terminal change to our downloads directory grid tracker and do a dot forward slash grid tracker and this will listen for these uh, messages in WSJTX let's roll out here a little bit we'll let it run a second here we'll see if it's uh, receiving anything we can see uh, the calls here and let it go for a little bit So, you know, you let it run long enough and then you'll get uh, additional information here on the map. You can click on that and find more information about that particular st uh, station and the message. And so that's uh, a lot of uh, a lot of things there uh, in Dragon OS that can work together uh, really nicely right out of the box. I'm literally running this on a USB stick. Uh, now, I will say uh, the other night with the uh, AirSpy plugged directly in, um, the 20 meter uh, band was uh, pretty active and I was getting all kind of information with little to no effort with this U-Loop antenna. So if there's something I'm doing uh, wrong here, let me know because I'm not um, as super familiar with uh, all the uh, ham related software, but I have tried to include that in there. Um, a lot of people have requested different pieces of software and um, to the best of my knowledge, uh, everything seems to be working together uh, really nicely. All right, so there you go. All right, have a good one.